Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's a certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this course, we're going to talk about keeping things clean. It's a pretty fundamental topic, and it comes directly from the CompTIA exam objectives. This is section 1.4, which talks about preventive maintenance and using the appropriate tools and cleaning materials when working on these systems. We're going to talk about keeping things clean on the inside and the outside. On the outside of the computer, we have a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor. We need to concentrate on maintaining and keeping up appearances. But in the inside, there's also other components. And how do you clean a motherboard and the components on a motherboard? How do you clean the connectors and those contacts? And we're going to go through every single piece of that. On the outside, when we begin cleaning a system, one of the first places that you'll want to start is the keyboard. And in my time, I've had some pretty ugly looking keyboards. The key caps themselves on the top of the keys can often become dirty because that's what we're touching all the time. And on keyboards that are used a lot, especially in manufacturing type environments where it's a very dirty area, the keyboards are always going to become dirty. So the top of those key caps can be cleaned. Oftentimes, you can use water. Or if it's a, a much more dirty problem, you can get in there with some isopropyl alcohol, some rubbing type alcohol, and clean off those keycaps. The alcohol will sometimes take off the things the water cannot. Now, you want to be sure you don't spray liquid or pour any liquid directly on the keyboard, because just underneath those keys is some electronic components. And we want to be sure that we don't cause a problem with those. If you do need to clean underneath the keys, you want to, if it's possible, to remove the keycaps when you work with some very fragile systems or environments where these keyboards are really self-contained. You can't get the keycaps off of that. And use a, a vacuum cleaner instead to be able to vacuum things out. Using a gas duster often makes sense because we are dealing with the keyboard. But if there's a lot of small particles in there, you'll oftentimes drive them farther into the keyboard. You'll have to end up taking the whole thing apart. If this is a problem where you have spilled liquid, or somebody has taken the soda they were drinking and it spilled inside the keyboard, Wow, there, there's not really much you can do there. You could try to take it apart and try to work on it. But the problem is with those very sticky type drinks where there's a lot of sugar involved, there really is no way to clean all of it off and getting it running 100% again. And most of the time, the cost benefit is to buy another keyboard, install a different keyboard, and have that used instead of trying to repair a liquid spill. Mouse technology certainly changed through the years. And these days, we're using a lot more of the optical mice. And the mouse maintenance on those is pretty easy because there's not a lot of moving parts associated with it. It really just involves cleaning the outside. Get a, a cloth with some damp water on it and cleaning off any dirt because those will also take the dirt from our hands. And it'll, it'll make that dirty as well. So we want to remove any dirt that might be there. Now, if you are using one of the old school mechanical mice, the kind that have the ball on the bottom, you know that those get dirty all the time. It used to be when I would visit a customer, one of the things I do while they were telling me about the problem they were having is I would almost uh, not even realize I was doing it. I turn the mouse over, I take the ball out, and I start cleaning out the inside to get rid of all the gunk and the buildup that occurs just by natural the use natural use of that mouse on the top of a desktop. Uh, one of the things that the manufacturers do is to uh, clean the mechanical rollers with water and a swab in there. The ones I even read said use a cotton swab because there's not much that can go wrong inside of there. But uh, often what you find is your fingernail works the best. And I thought maybe that was just me, but I did find this article on Apple's website where it actually tells you use your fingernail to get the dirt and, and dust out of there because that, that's really the easiest way and the quickest way to remove it from there. So I was doing it right the whole time. When you're dealing with a CRT monitor, these are the monitors that have that cathode ray tube. That's what CRT stands for. You want to be sure when you're working on any type of monitor, especially a CRT monitor, you turn off the monitor, you unplug it from a power source. So there's no possibility for electrocuting yourself when you're working on the outside of the monitor. Now, you don't want to take off the monitor case. Don't open it up. 
uh, this is really for the trained professionals that deal with that type of technology because it has very high voltages inside of it. If you need to wipe off the screen, leave the monitor case on it and just wipe the screen off with a damp cloth. The casing itself on the back side of the monitor you should clean off as well. It often collects a lot of dust on the top. And you'll notice that it has, has a lot of airflow going through it because those types of monitors get very hot. So just make sure it's clean. Make sure all the dust is off of it. Maybe use a vacuum to, to maybe blow out dust that might be inside the monitor. But you don't want to do anything on the inside. Don't poke anything inside the monitor. Don't push anything inside the monitor. Don't put a vacuum inside. Just try to blow it out from the outside using those access holes. Now, if it's an LCD monitor, it's almost the same situation. Be sure you unplug it. Be sure you remove it from a power source. But now you don't have to deal with a very large system. You'll notice these are very flat. So you want to wipe the screen off with a damp cloth. These screens are very, very sensitive. They have, it's, it's a liquid crystal display. It has liquid inside of it. So if you push on that monitor too hard, you will damage it. So use a very soft touch. Because these things are also very easy to scratch, make sure what you're using is a cloth that's not going to scratch that screen. It's very important as well. You don't want to use chemical cleaners on those LCD screens either. Either You may want to check with the manufacturer's documentation to make sure you're using the right kind of cleaning materials for the front of that LCD display. Now, you'll find that the monitor casing, although it's much smaller on an LCD display, it's practically the same technique as your CRT monitor. There's probably not as much dust, but you can certainly clean it off using a damp cloth. On the outside of a computer, you'll notice that it will collect a lot of dust, especially the computers that sit on a floor, that are in busy work areas, maybe manufacturing environments. There are fans inside of these computers that are pulling the air through them. So of course, the fans themselves are going to collect a lot of that dust. Uh, notice we have a trend here, unplugging the system from the power source before you begin the cleaning process. Some of the intake fans themselves are on the power supply. So another good reason to unplug it from the power source before you begin cleaning. There, if there's a really heavy dust buildup, you may want to just grab a vacuum cleaner that's designed for this and clean the dust out of there because it's going to be very hard on some of these fans to get a cloth inside of there and work with it, especially from the outside. If there's any remaining dust on the system, you can certainly use a damp cloth to get rid of that. But one thing to keep in mind when you're working near power supplies and with fans that are on power supplies, don't open a power supply. Don't clean the inside of a power supply. Don't poke anything inside of that power supply to try to remove the dust. If there's dust in there, you're much safer making sure you don't go anywhere near the insides of power supplies. Even when they're powered off, they can have a lot of extra voltage in there that can electrocute you. So what about the inside of a computer? What do we have to do there? In those particular cases, make sure that you power off the system and definitely unplug from the power source here. You're going to have a lot of different electronic components exposed to you, many of which will maintain power over time. You want to be sure you unplug, especially these newer motherboards that are always on. They're on standby, and they're ready to power up at an instant. They always have power going to them. By unplugging from your power source, you're going to be sure that those always on systems become completely off. Always follow when you're inside of a computer system those electrostatic discharge prevention techniques we talked about in a previous uh, video module. Use a wrist strap, touch the metal chassis, make sure that you're not going to cause problems just by going in there and performing preventive maintenance cleaning. Don't directly touch any of the components that are in these systems. And that's pretty much a universal truth. You don't know what type of static electricity is on your systems. Even when using ESD prevention techniques, they can't get rid of everything. So the fewer components that you're directly touching, the better. And when you're inside of a computer, be gentle with it. It's very easy, especially with all of the different systems and devices in there, to pull apart a cable, to knock something loose. You want to be sure, again, that you're not causing more problems. Problems. And with all those little audio wires and everything else connecting to the motherboard, you want to make sure they stay in place. On a motherboard itself, cleaning it is a relatively simple process. There's not a lot of moving parts on a motherboard other than the fans. There are fans oftentimes right on top of 
a CPU. So you want to be sure that you're very careful when working around those. If there's a lot of dust in there, grab a vacuum. Get one with those brush extensions on there that aren't going to knock a, a lot around and get rid of as much dust as possible. They just make the environment that much hotter, which means it's that much less effective and efficient in performing. It'll certainly lower the, the age of that device by getting hotter than it really should be. If there's a lot of dust in a small area, you may want to blow it out. If your vacuum allows you to reverse that or use one of those air canisters to blow out some of that dust, that might be a good option for you. But again, try not to physically touch anything on the motherboard. Uh, the motherboard itself is doesn't really have a lot of things we can replace. So if we damage the motherboard, we have to replace the entire thing. So the, the fewer things we're touching there, the better off we are. And if you've got some fans on the motherboard, you may just want to spin them manually with your finger. Try to get all the dust off of them. But try not to touch very very many other things on your motherboard. When cleaning connectors and contacts, you want to be sure that you have the best metal to metal connection, this electrical connection that you have. And when you don't, you're having a loose connection or a bad connection. Very often it is these dirty connections that's our problem. You want to use a contact cleaner and a, a a, a swab or a cloth that does not have any lint on it. Again, do not use a pencil eraser, something we talked about in a previous video module. And it sounds crazy just saying it, doesn't it? It's a pencil eraser. Erase things from your piece of paper with a pencil. Do not use a pencil eraser to clean the contacts inside of your computer. Often you don't want to use water either on these types of connectors. Water can oxidize, essentially rust some of these pieces. You want to use a very specialized contact cleaner when it's with these components that are going to be pushed next to each other and stay that way for long periods of time. And it, before you plug it in, before you test any of that, make sure that it is completely dry. It's one of the nice things about using contact cleaner, which is very often has isopropyl alcohol in it, which evaporates very quickly. That's one of the good reasons for using it. So before you plug it in, make sure there's no other moisture on it, that it is completely dry. So let's review. We've cleaned the outside with our keyboard and our mouse and our monitor. We've also gotten into the inside. We know what to touch and what not to touch. Well, that brings us to the end of another Professor Messer A-plus certification training program. For more training videos, which are absolutely free, discussion boards where you can talk about this video and all of the videos that we have out there, visit our website at freeaplus.com.